Why the hell would there be four or five commercial banks that hold the largest short position in any commodity traded in the COMEX in silver? Hey everyone, get ready for a deep dive into the wild world of silver and gold with Andy Schechtman. Today, we're uncovering the latest moves by big banks in China as they scramble to cover their silver shorts. What does this mean for the gold market dynamics, silver market analysis, and the all-important supply and demand fundamentals? Stick around to find out, because this is one silver lining you won't want to miss. You know, um, wealth is found in, in a broke country's debt, uh, our treasuries, or, or a country that has chosen to inflate versus uh, being prudent with, with their, their fiscal policy and the monetary policies. Uh, I think we are moving to a period of time where the rules are being changed, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's almost as if gold and silver markets seem to be playing by a new set of rules, I guess is what I would try to say. And um, it's almost as if commodities, like Zoltan Pozar said, this is Bretton Woods three, a system surrounded by commodities. It's as if commodities are worth more than currency nowadays, and this is a rush to do so but not so fast that it creates attention. And this is how they suppress the paper price and then deliver it. Take possession of $571 million with the kilo bars in China when no one's looking off of the COMEX. This is a trend that I think you will see accelerate. And, um, you know, it's, it's the central banks largely. The big money who has not just the big money, but it's closest to the information. And, and it's interesting to me that this is being overlooked, this transition of, of gold and silver from west to east is a phenomenon that's real, and I think it's it's interesting to me just how under uh, the underestimation of the significance of this in the West to me is, is is shocking. You know, who knows what our real gold reserves are? Who knows where the twelve billion in gold reserves that the Ukraine supposedly sold to fund the war went? Who knows where Saddam Hussein's gold went or Gaddafi's gold went? You know, I don't know. It's 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 actually I find it to be quite foolish. Um, that the eastern countries are so open about their gold accumulation and you know but but it's not true how much they're accumulating you got analysts from the bank of montreal you got even people i think in the imf who came out and said the numbers that that we see are nowhere near what is actually being accumulated and you know china's the largest producer of gold in the world too they're not telling us how much they're producing we have no idea how much they're really truly accumulating but I think it's very foolish. I think it's hubris. I think it's recency bias, normalcy bias. Um, I think the West is, is um, if they really aren't accumulating any, they're asleep at the switch. This is a system where, look, if you look at a historical footprint, accepting treasury debt, the debt of another country has a very small footprint in terms of being historically significant. And I think we're moving away from that. And when you weaponize the treasury uh, and make it so that if we don't align ideologically, we're going to take it from you only as incentivizing and accelerating the detreasurization, the de-dollarization and the accumulation of gold, which has no counterparty risk. And this is the whole thing here. It's an asset, not only that has outperformed the bond market going back to 2000 handily, but it's an asset that carries, as Doug Casey has made famous his statement, an asset that simultaneously carries no counterparty liability. And it's true. And I think that's really what the world is realizing, that uh, if, as Rick Rule says, you're not a contrarian, you're destined to be a victim. And, and if you're fully invested in dollars, you're destined to go broke. Well, that's the same thing that I think the central banks see and are acting upon. And the truth of it is, is that our media doesn't do a poor job of telling us this. They do no job of telling us <laughs> this. And, and there are a lot of very sophisticated people in finance that are very well read. They just read the wrong stuff. They should be listening to you and and maybe they would have a better understanding of what is actually happening but the flow of of gold and silver this this decades long standing trend of of the price of gold and silver being determined by the western institutional investors it's breaking down and again i think the underestimating of the significance of this is a big big mistake um and I think it will one that will will wake up one morning. The West will wake up and say, "What did we just allow happen?" The prime example of it is the arbitrage on silver. You know, you have a four dollar increase on the Shanghai Metals Exchange over Comex, real damn near four dollars an ounce higher. So the arbitrage is real. Any any metal that can be purchased in the West and delivered to the East will happen at that level. 
Uh, and I think it should be the opposite of that. We should be hanging on and accumulating whatever we can. Instead, we're sending it all that way. Well, you could also argue that, you know, gold hasn't even gone any higher. It's the fact that the dollar is losing its value. The amount of money creation and inflation is is destabilizing the value of of everything, really, in valued in dollars. And uh, I just think people underestimate where gold will truly go um, and what that means for the dollar. So, yeah, be careful what you wish for. $2,400 on an inflation-adjusted value is still very, very low as to where it should be. Look at all of the distortions created in in over the last twenty years in in asset prices due to, you know, suppressed interest rates and 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 easy money and and you know a couple of the only assets that haven't been distorted to the upside have been gold and silver. You know, look at look at the Dow Jones, look at the Nasdaq, look at the S and P, look at all of all of these. You know, look at real estate market, look at the bond. All of these things have been distorted. Everything through suppression of interest rates. And that's the problem, the misallocations in resource and capital, the, the distortions in, in asset prices, price discovery. These things have all been distorted, yet you look at gold and silver and ask yourself, why the hell would there be four or five commercial banks that hold the largest short position in any commodity traded on the COMEX in silver? Now, there's a lot of talk going on right now about what is really happening with silver. Um, but ask yourself, why the hell would they be short? Uh, to me, it's as dumb as a mud wall. And so when, when you look at real value, um, you could argue that the, the you know, gold and silver are massively undervalued in comparison to things like the Dow Jones and, and the S&P and, uh, and the handful of stocks holding it up. So I guess it's in the eyes of the beholder. But to me, even at gold at 2,400, it's undervalued as to where it really truly should be. And um, I think people's idea of valuation are, are misplaced. Again, I will point to the fact that gold and silver are assets that have no counterparty liability. And the West has proven how dangerous it can be in holding traditional assets. They can be inflated upon, they can be defaulted upon, uh, and, and they can be confiscated if, if, if we don't align ideologically. That is, that's like sticking a knife into the heart of, of, our, uh, of this country's trust globally. And you take a glass and throw it against the wall and break it into a million pieces. Putting that back together is not easy, if not impossible. And I think we've we've come damn near close to destroying our trust. And now if you talk about lowering rates and giving up on austerity, giving up on normalizing, I mean, we never will. We got $200 trillion, literally, in debt, both funded and unfunded. How how do you ever normalize? I guess you probably won't, and we will do what all governments have done, and that's to choose inflation over austerity. But it's not going to end well. And, and this is the whole reason why the central banks, who not only are the wealthiest, but they're the most well-informed traders in the world, and they continue to buy gold because they see the handwriting on the wall, while the people in the West believe this could never happen to us, and, and that's the fatal flaw in, in all of this. Thanks for joining us on this exciting journey through the complexities of the silver and gold markets. If Andy's insights helped you see the silver lining, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cutting-edge market analysis. Stay informed, stay ahead, and we'll see you in the next video.